Hello all my JavaScript friends, this is the Virtual Wide, aka Mike Smith, and this is Fun with JavaScript, our jigsaw puzzle game. Woo, it's been two weeks since I've last recorded anything. I've been involved with a play here at the community theater, and I tell you, it takes up all your time, but it is so much fun. But I'm back at it now, and so what we're going to do today is that we're going to write the code to make sure that all of these tests for the piece, the puzzle, and the vertex actually pass. So let's go ahead, first of all, and let's figure out where we were on the last video. And where we were was basically we had just created all of our specs for the vertex right there. Very short and very sweet. The piece right here. This is the testing for all the pieces. And this is the test for all the different puzzles. And as you can tell, our classes, puzzle, piece, and vertex are just completely blank. So let's go ahead and let's run the jigsaw puzzle. But before I do, make sure you take a look at the bottom of the screen where it says github.com slash the virtualoid slash fwjs dash jigsaw puzzle dash jigsaw dash puzzle and that will be the github git lab you know github git lab no git labs at work github link uh, where you can access all the code that i'm doing uh, right now as it stands i'm getting ready to record the uh, coding for it to create these tests, but I'm actually a lot further along where I'm actually doing all the jigsaw puzzle part where I'm moving all the pieces and all that kind of fun stuff. So if you want kind of a preview of what I'm doing, go ahead and go to that GitHub page, take a look at it, clone it off, play around with it, have some fun with it. Again, all the code is completely free of charge. I have no licensing on it whatsoever. Well, I got an MIT license, but no licensing on it whatsoever. It is all completely free of charge for you to use. But for this particular video, we're going to be creating the different code for the to, to satisfy the test. So to run the test, we go npm run test. And when it opens up, uh, Cypress will boot itself. And we're going to do the E2E testing. We're going to click on that. We're going to choose a browser. We're going to click on testing in Chrome. It did a real big screen, so I've kicked the screen down here. So here's our uh, here our uh, test. Um, good Lord, 17 days ago. Ah, so you know, for instance, if we click on vertex here, it was it will give us a information saying that hey, we got an error there. So let's go back to the uh, specs and let's go to, for instance, a uh, piece. And it's going to run all of its tests. And you can see there we got five good test because you know we're, we, some of those tests are going to be working working out okay we got 33 failed tests so let's go ahead and start writing the code for each of these tests and we'll start with the vertex first okay here we are at the vertex and if we take a look at the vertex test we're basically all we want to do here is uh, we, we should not be able to add a property once we create a new vertex so that should be fairly easy and simple to do. Let's go over to Vertex and let's pop in some code. And that should be it. Because basically all we're doing here, the, the, the base Vertex class really does absolutely nothing except create itself. And that's all we really need to test for here. Uh, once we get to the graphical part of the Vertex, there's going to be some additional pieces of information we're going to need. But for right now, all we really care about is that does this particular piece have a Vertex? The properties of this vertex, the behaviors of this vertex are kind of unknown at this particular point in time. We just need to know, does it have a vertex? And that will allow us to be able to say, if piece A has a vertex and piece B has the same vertex, we'd be able to make the, that particular connection. So this is all we really need to do to be able to fix this one particular uh, test. So let's, let's take a look at the test. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, we're back at our test. So we're gonna click on vertex. And ta-da! Our vertexes now have one success and no failure, so we're done. <laughs> That's it. Nothing for the vertex. Let's take now a look at the piece. We got a lot going on here with the piece. So let's click over to our code and let's start working with that. Okay, so here are the tests that we're going to start working at. So we're going to do this one step at a time here through each of these described. So we're going to create the test that will satisfy all four of these, that we should be able to create it. Uh, we should be able to default to no vertices, which means now we're going to have a vertex count property. Uh, that uh, the, we should fill the error, the vertices cannot be changed. Uh, actually, that's, that's incorrect there. That should be, we should throw the error as vertices can only be an array 
of vertexes, vertices. So that description was incorrect there. So that will solve that particular problem for, for that. And then also we're going to throw an error that no property can be added. So let's pop our code in there. Okay, so there's our constructor that we're going to be doing here. So basically in the constructor, we're only going to be able to pass a vertices argument. It's going to default to be a, uh, an array, and that's going to get it from arg. So that should satisfy that particular test here. We're going to seal it, which would satisfy the test that we cannot add a particular property to the uh, piece. And we also are going to add the vertices. So we look like we're going to have a method called add vertices, which actually works out good because we do have uh, within the, that's the puzzle one, sorry. Within the piece one here, we should have something in here for uh, add vertices. Uh, yep, we sure do right down here. So we're going to, we're now going to basically now go ahead and pop in an add vertices method. Okay, so we had the add vertices method here and now we pop it add vertices. This is where we're going to do some checks to make sure that we're going to uh, have the uh, correct, throw the correct errors. We're going to throw a type of error if it is not an, ar an array itself we're going to make absolutely certain that each vertex that argument that's within that array is going to be an instance of vertex so we're going to need to import that that's good now see this dot vertices that's going to be a uh, it's going to be a private private variable so we'll need to create a private variable up here called vertices Yep, okay, and that will do the map for the vertices. And so I don't see any more errors going around here. So it looks like we have the add vertices. So it looks like actually we kind of covered, cut, killed two birds with one stone here. Not only have we, we're taking care of the entire, where's piece, there it is. Not, not only are we taking care of the section up here for creating the default, but we're also taking care of this down here for the add vertices. So let's go ahead and take a look back up here. Notice we still, the IDE is still sitting here saying that there's an unknown variable vertex count. So it looks like we have a vertex count on piece. So let's go to piece and let's add in the vertex count, which will be the, that we're returning the size of the vertices. Because notice here we have a private variable as vertices, which means that no instantiated instance will be able, no anything that instantiates an instance of piece will not be able to access vertices. But we need to find out how many vertices are inside the piece. So this will be allow us to be able to get the vertex count without actually getting into the vertices. And this will help us to be able to sit here and uh, say, you know, we're trying to protect our vertices because vertices is still a map. It's, it's basically still an object, which means that if we were just to return vertices, for example, then the calling program who, that has instantiated this particular uh, vertices can go in there and change any of the members of the ver vertices. And we don't want that. So what we're going to do here is we're trying to protect vertices as much as possible. So we're not going to return vertices. So in this case, we're going to return just the size of the vertices. So let's see. That should clear that. It clears that. I don't see any more errors there. And since now we've got... Uh, add vertices. Let's see if we got any additional errors down here. Uh, we should throw an error, error if it's not an array of vertices. We should throw an error if at least one of the vertices is not in, is in the collection because we don't want to be able to, you know, add a vertice in there twice. All the vertices need to be basically uh, exactly this, basically need, need to be unique. And given at least one of the vertices in the collection should not add any of the vertices. So for instance, if, the, if we have a, if we're adding 10 vertices and the 10th one is a duplicate, I don't want to add the other nine in there, so we're checking for that too. Should it throw error if duplicate vertices are found in the vertices. Given the duplicate error, should not add any of the vertices. And then we should be able to add them, and we should be able to return the piece. So let's check, let's check back on our piece to make sure on our add vertices. Um, yep, we return the piece there. This is where we uh, do the uh, vert this is where we're adding, we're adding, adding in all the vertices. This is where we're checking to make sure there's no duplicate uh, vertices in there. Well, yeah, right, actually right here. This is where we're checking to see if there's a duplicate. This is where we're checking to make sure that there are no, that any of the vertices are not already in the collection. So all, both of those should pass. Let's save that off and let's go to Cypress. And it's going to run its thing automatically now that we have saved it. And we now have 22 passing. So that's, that's, whoops, that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's scroll up and see what we got here. Yep, creating default now works creating with the vertices property now works so 
these two particular descriptions, creating default and creating with the vertices property works. Add vertex does not work. That's correct because we haven't done anything. Add vertices, yep, it all works. So that's great. So we got that particular piece uh, done. That's wonderful. Yay. So, all right, we now taken care of two of these. Actually, we took care of kind of three of these things. We, we, we took care of de creating default. Uh, let's see, new piece creating with vertices property. We actually, we took care of all that too, auto automatically. So now we have an add vertex uh, method. So here we are, here the IDE is telling me that it doesn't have that add vertex. So let's go ahead and pop that add vertex code inside the piece. And there we go. And this is kind of a trick thing I'm doing here. Basically, all I'm doing here is that add vertex takes a single vertex argument. All I'm going to really do here is I'm going to sit here and pop it inside of array and call add vertices. That way I don't have any kind of duplications of code because add vertices does everything I need it to do. It gives me all the error messages I need to, it, it needs, you know, automatically, it figures everything out for me. So why duplicate all that code inside, code inside add vertex? Why don't you just call it add vertices and just change the vertex into an array? The only difference here is, is that um, I am passing a particular error message here saying that the vertex argument must be a vertex inst instance. That will allow me that if it's not an instance of, of a, a vertex, then, then uh, the, we will display the correct error messages because if we're doing add vertices, then our error message is actually going to be a little bit different. So that should take care of add vertex. Let's go back over to piece.cy here. So add vertex. I'm looking for any IDE errors. I don't see any IDE errors. So it looks like all that is correct. So let's flip back over to our code on piece and let's uh, refresh. Actually, it automatically ran it. So now we have 25 Good ones, let's see, add, yep, add vertex, there it is. Add vertex now runs like a champ. Wonderful, all right, what's next? We got add vertex, we got add vertices, that's already done. Da, 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 da. Look, looks like we got remove vertex, so we're gonna need to have a remove vertex argument. And I'll tell you right now, I did the same thing with remove vertex as I did with remove, uh, add vertex, is that I basically remove vertex calls remove vertices, so let's just take care of both of these right now. We're gonna take care of remove vertex and remove vertices. So it looks like that we're gonna need the, the remove vertex uh, method. And I don't see any other, any other errors there. Well, we're gonna need a remove vertices method. And that looks like that's all the errors, that's all the errors for the IDE is popping on here. So let's, let's add those in there one at a time. Let's do remove vertex. And there it is. And so as you can tell here, it's, it's, it works the exact same way as add vertex here. I'm just calling now remove vertices and just passing the vertex as a, as a, within an array. So we're gonna need the remove vertices method. So let's pop that code inside there. And through the magic of television, there it is. It works the exact same way. We're, we're testing to make sure that the vertices argument is definitely an array. We're testing to make sure that the each argument within that, uh, with the, well, each, Argue, yeah, each argument, excuse me, each instance within that collection, within that array, is an instance of vertex. And of course, like with add vertex, I'm passing my own error message here, depending upon whether I'm calling remove vertex or remove vertices. I'm checking here to make sure that it that the vertex argument must exist within the within the within the vertexes. Uh, are within the vertex's collection, vertices collection. And I'm also checking to make sure there are no duplicates found because I want to remove the same vertex within the same argument. And again, I'm checking every single one of them first because if I get any kind of error whatsoever, I don't want to remove anything unless everything is good. Once you get to this point here, everything is good. We're going to delete all the vertices straight out, straight out of the vertices uh, property. And we're going to return this, which is going to, so that will allow me to chain all these if, if necessary. So now we got that. Let's go ahead and save it. Oops. If I hit the right key, let's do that again. Yeah, Control S. Let's go to our code. Let's hit refresh. Like I said, it should have already refreshed. As you can tell there, we now got 32 uh, good ones. And we still got nine errors, and that's good. We've got 32 successes. So there's our create default. There's our vertices. There's our add vertex. There's our add vertices. Remove vertex. Remove vertices. Yep. Everything now is correct. 
And that should take care of our real big, huge bulk. All right, we got clear vertices. Very simple. Let's go ahead and add clear vertices inside here. And that's going to be extraordinarily simple. Clear vertices is we're basically going to take the vertices and uh, we're going to create an array out of all the different keys that are currently there. This is going to get, basically give me an array of ver vertices and I'm just going to call remove vertices. And that's it. And then I'm going to return the vertices that got, uh, got removed. So clear vertices, while everything else will always return the instance, in this particular case for clear vertices, I'm going to return all the vertices that got removed. And I, I actually, I was kind of thinking ahead of that. If I clear it out of one, this is, we're going to basically need to merge two pieces together. When we merge two pieces together, we're going to have to merge together the vertices. So in this particular case, I want to be able to, well, on the clear vertices, I want to be able to return the vertices so I have a record of which vertices got removed from the piece. So that should have, that should have fixed the clear vertices. That's a really rinky-dink simple one. And you can tell it's already running. So let's just skip back up here and uh, yep, here's clear vertices. Works like a champ. All right, so what's next? Da, 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 da. Is connected to. So this test to make sure uh, one, uh, vert one vertex uh, can be, f one vertex can be found in another piece. So we're gonna need an is connected to method. And it looks like that's all we're gonna need. So let's pop is connected to into our piece. Code. There it is. And basically I want to make sure that what we're passing is an actual piece to it. So we're going to basically say is a, is a particular vertex, is this particular vertex part of a collection of vertexes in this in a particular piece here. So all we're going to do here is that we're going to say uh, connected pieces equals dot 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 this vertex keys dot filter equals piece dot is vertex present vertex. So is this actually going to work? No, because we're now we, we're out now missing within here a is vertex present. And all ver is vertex present is this just this, this helps tells us whether a particular vertex is within the piece. So let's pop in is vertex present. And again, we're testing to make sure that the vertex is indeed a vertex argument. And then we're just returning a true or false whether that vertex is, is within the, this particular uh, is within this particular piece. So now when we go back to is connected to, we're basically saying, you know, we're going to take all the keys of, we're going to take all of our different keys of all of our different, excuse me, all our different vertexes, all our different keys here. We're going to filter it by our, we're going to filter it based upon whether we find that particular vertex in our piece. And what that should return now is we should return a particular length and that connected pieces length will return either a connected pieces, which is a collection of pieces, a, this, a turn of, ah, excuse me, this will either return, actually connected pieces is a wrong variable there. That's actually, what that actually is returning there is, is this is returning the number of this, re, yeah, so what this is, the, okay, my brain got messed up there. So. What this is doing now is now that we got is vertex present, this is going to filter everything out. And so connected pieces is either going to come back with a length of zero or a length of one. And this is and if it is a length of one, we're going to come back with connected pieces. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And this will basically allow us to be able to say, hey, is this particular vertex connected to a particular piece? So that should also take care of is connected and is connected to and is vertex present. That should actually take care of two of our two birds with one stone. There it goes. Is it going to finish all the way? No, we still got one more. So as you can tell here, is vertex present did good did get correct it did get correct eh, did work and is connected to now also works. So all we got left here is merge. Well, let's take a look at the merge code. So what does merge do? Well, merge will basically merge two pieces together. So the idea between merge here is that it's going to say I'm going to have a new piece here. I'm going, I'm going to basically merge my current piece with, with another piece. And the idea here is that when we merge them together, we're going to merge all the vertexes together uh, into a particular piece and we're going to return the new piece. But, in the, but also what we're going to do is we're going to clear out the vertices from these two 
old pieces because these two pieces are being merged together into one. You know, two pieces are connected to each other. And that will allow us to be able to say, I've got this new piece with all these vertices, but these other two pieces are now toast. And the easy way to do that is we create a new piece, then we get all the vertices from this particular piece and all the vertices from the other piece by clearing both the vertices. And then we just merge them together using a simple little filter. Real easy, real simple. And then we add all those vertices to the new piece and we're done. That's it. So now all the vertices will then be added directly into the new piece. And so what we'll end up with here is three pieces. Basically, our current piece will have no more vertices. Our piece that's within the argument here will have no more vertices. And what we'll return is a completely new piece with all the vertices. And eventually what we'll end up with is one piece has vertices and no other pieces have vertices. And that will mean our puzzle has been completed. So that should be it. We should now have a completely clear error, a completely clear test for our piece. Sure enough, 41 test, no failures. Ain't that pretty. Well, that looks great. So now the piece is done. All we have left to do is the puzzle. Let's let that run. Not quite as big as the piece because there's not, there's not a whole lot to the puzzle there. Six successes, 20 failures. Let's take a look at the puzzle and let's take it one step at a time here. And again, just like before, we're going to start off with the creation of the pieces. And let me expand all of this. And so basically what we're going to have here is that we're going to, we're going to need an argument. It's going to have a pieces uh, part of the argument here. And we're going to test to make sure that the pieces is indeed an array of pieces. And you know, so there's our pieces argument again, still our pieces argument. It looks like we're going to have a piece count there too. There's our pieces argument. And that will allow us to be able to do, that's all we're going to need to do on the constructor. Let me just, uh, de let me, take these particular things down here so I can read this just a little bit better. There we go. So we're going to take a look at the constructor first. So let's go ahead and go to our puzzle, which is completely empty. And let's pop in our constructor. And through the magic of television, there's our constructor. So obviously right now we're going to need, just like we did with the, with the piece, the puzzle here, we're going to have an add pieces method. So let's go ahead and pop that add pieces method in there. And there we have the add pieces method. So it's going to need an instance of piece that's missing the import. So do the import. It looks like it's going to have a private variable called pieces. And I believe that's going to be a map and it is. So let's pop uh, pieces equals new map. I can't type. So that gives pieces there. So that clears out all those errors. Let's go back to our test suite and see if there's any more errors within the creation we need to take a look at here. And actually, yes, there is. We have a piece count, which will be the number of pieces that are currently inside the puzzle. And just like with the piece class there, I don't want to expose the piece collection within the puzzle. So I'm gonna expose the piece count by just putting a little getter function called piece count, and that will return the pieces size. And that should cover everything for our constructor. Yep. Okay. I see nothing else in the constructor. And actually that's how she's going to also, you know, should also get add pieces. So let's go ahead and oops, not add piece, excuse me. That should get add pieces too. So let's take a look at add pieces real quick and make sure that we don't have anything that we're missing. looks like we're okay there. So let's let it run. So puzzle is now running. And now we got 14 successes. That's really good. Let's go to the top there and let's take a look and see what we have here. Yep, creation is now work. Get closest pieces does not, which is correct. Add pieces not, which is correct. And add pieces now should completely work. Hey, looks works like a champ. Fantastic. All righty. So the next one on our list here is going to be get closest pieces. So this is basically a way to say it. I've got close pieces. I, I've got two pieces together that once I drop a piece, these pieces are going to, I need to determine whether the two pieces are close together or not. So let's pop the code in there and show you what that looks like. All right, here's get closest pieces. The real big thing here is 
is that first of all, I'm checking for errors, no big deal, making sure that the, um, I actually have that piece within my collection, and if it is, I, and if it's not, then I return false. Here's the real big key here is, this generic function can't do anything with this. I mean, because I don't know how the puzzles are going to, you know, I don't know what the relationship between the different pieces will be within the puzzle. So this is going to be a routine that is going to have to be defined whenever I create a, uh, a, a class that extends puzzle. For instance, um, I do know for a fact that I'm going to have a class called graphic puzzle, which is where we introduce all the graphics that will be associated with the browser. So it's going to be at that point that the puzzle is going to need to be able to sit there and uh, say, okay, I've got piece A and piece B. How close are they together based upon the vertices and the locations physically on the screen? I can't do that here at the base class. So I got myself a little do-to-do -do 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 here saying, you know, hey, once the graphics are implemented, this has got to change. You know, right now I can't do anything about it because I want to keep this generic. So I'm just going to just, I just throw something really stupid inside here, basically, you know, hey, uh, do these two pieces, are, are they in the same collection? If they are, then hey, great, hey, we got it. So, yeah, you know, that's the way it goes. What can you do about it? Not much, but that will at least clear, that will at least allow us to pass our test. And within the graphics puzzle or any puzzle that extends this particular puzzle, we will redefine get closest pieces. So that should fix up get closest pieces. It's probably already run. Let's just check it out here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Remove piece, add pieces. It's got to be around here. There it is, get closest pieces. As you can tell, there's, there's really not a whole lot of testing that we can do with get closest pieces. And that, that's, that's no problem. All right, add piece. Just like with pieces, add piece does nothing more than call add pieces by passing it as passing the argument as an array, as you can tell here. That's it. It doesn't do much of anything else. So there's no need to go back over that. So as you can tell, once that finishes up, let's go back up here and yep, now add piece works like a champ. Add pieces, so let's take a look at remove piece. In fact, we'll just go do both of these at the same time. Remove it, move piece or remove pieces because if I pop in remove piece, in fact, let me show you something here. Okay. so. Da -da -da. So I type in remove piece. There is remove piece. It says it's missing remove pieces. Well, let's just save it and run it and see what happens. Nope, remove piece should still, it still blows up because there is no remove pieces. So just because we have the routine inside here doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work because we're missing remove pieces. So let's pop in the remove pieces code. Boom, there it is. And remove pieces, does the simple, again, check for the arrays. It wants to make absolutely certain that um, I am passing an actual piece as my type. It also wants to make certain that there are, that each one of the pieces that are listed in the array are actually part of this collection. And it also wants to make sure there are no duplicates within this particular, uh, ar this particular array that we're passing. So I'll make sure there's no duplicates. Once all that is occurring there, we're gonna, we're gonna delete it out of the pieces. And then we'll just return this. And we're done at that particular point in time. So let's go ahead and save it. Let's run our code and it passes. So what happened here? So piece passed, puzzle passed, vertex passed. That means we're done. There is absolutely nothing else to do. Everything is done. Everything works. So that's all there really is to this. Our code is now written to satisfy the test. And that's part of the TDD development process here is that we created the test first and all of our tests pretty much failed. Then we created the code to be able to satisfy those tests and that has now been created. The next thing actually is to refactor this code to make it even better. I'm not going to do that at this particular point in time. I'm going to kind of show you that when we get to the graphical portion, which is going to be our next couple of next videos here. Um, and it's again, um, I've actually gotten a little bit further in my, uh, in my development here. So if you want to take a look at the progress I'm making, always, you can always go to my uh, GitHub, root, GitHub repository, which is listed below. It's, it's public, fwjs-jigsaw-puzzle, and it'll give you everything you need to know about what I'm doing currently with this jigsaw puzzle. 
that is all that we have for the jigsaw puzzle uh, our next video is going to cover the graphical portion so it's going to be a whole lot of fun thank you very much for watching if you like this video please click on the like button below if you wish to keep informed about new content click on the subscribe button and as always please leave a comment below i'd love to hear from you again thank you very much for watching this is the virtuoid aka mike smith we'll see you later